So force field analysis is the idea that we have different forces coming together and putting us in a state of flux, okay? We've got, we've got the forces that drive us to do something, and then we have the competing forces or the forces that are taking away. And when you're in the middle of problem solving something, what you want to do is really go after it in a way that you can analyze it and be really specific. And that can help you because a lot of times when you're confronted with a problem, it can become very overwhelming. So you want to make sure that you're being didactic about this, you're being really thoughtful about it. It's very difficult to do when you've got a bus full of screaming kids, but if you have some tools on it, it might be useful for you. So the way this works is, force field analysis says that you have to come up with a situation that you're in right now that is the problem, something that you don't like that's happening. And then you want to figure out what the situation is that you want it to become, right? And so that's an, an easy way of saying, what's your goal? So what is it now? What do you want it to be? Then you look at what the obstacles are to keeping the situation unchanged or keeping it from being what you want it to become. Then you figure out what your top priority obstacle is. And finally, you figure out the resources needed for it, and you have some possible action steps that you develop. So I'm going to give you an example. This morning I came outside. Before I left, my husband said to me, you know, you've been hot every day when you go out. I, I think you should, you're, not, you're dressed a little too hot. That's a really heavy wool skirt. You're going to be hot. And I was going to wear my boots and I had a hat and everything. I said, you know how I get to get really cold? He said, you're going to just trust me. So I put my coat on, and it's actually a thin coat, it's not, but it's not my really thin coat. So I thought I was prepared, right? So I go outside, I'm in my sneakers, my coat, and the wind hits me like you can't imagine. And I'm walking, I gotta walk 10, 12 blocks. And I'm getting really cold. I'm really, really cold. I'm one of these people who gets icy cold really quickly. So I say to myself, oh, bad situation. What's my situation now? I'm cold, and I don't want to be cold. I want to be warm. Okay? So the situation is that I'm cold. The situation that I want it to become is that I want to be warm. Specifically because when I'm cold, my brain starts to freeze. My brain starts to freeze, and I get to a point where I can't think very well, and I'm thinking, okay, i got to start my morning, and I want to be as prepared as possible. And I like to think about what it is I'm going to do. That's why when I came in this morning, I was a little foggy. Literally, it was because I was cold. So, all right, the situation that I wanted was that I wanted to become warm. What were the obstacles that were keeping the situation unchanged? Well, they were the temperature, obviously. They were the wind. The wind was, I don't know if anybody else experienced, but the wind was really heavy duty. They were my lack of preparation, my clothing. Specifically, I didn't have a hat. My mother always said to me, you know, you lose 60% of your heat from your head. you got to wear a hat. I always said, well, I have long, thick hair. Well, it's not as thick as it used to be, so I, I was still pretty cold. So what the obstacles were keeping me, keeping the situation unchanged, it was my lack of clothing, the temperature, and the wind, the extreme wind. What was my top priority obstacle? I started thinking about this. I'm thinking, what's the top reason why I'm cold here? Is it the temperature? Well, actually, no. It wasn't super, super cold. It was like what, four, late high 40s. All right, I didn't, I wasn't dressed properly, but it wasn't that bad. I wasn't standing out there in the bathing suit. So what was my top priority obstacle? The wind. The wind was my top priority obstacle. That was my biggest problem. What were the resources that I had to counteract this? Well, okay, can't really change the temperature too much. I looked in my pockets. I have gloves. Okay, this is a good start. Put the gloves on. All right, these are gloves. I have a collar that can button up. So I have a collar. This is another resource I have. I know this is very rudimentary, but trust me, this morning, this was my big problem. All right, gloves, collar. What else could I do to counteract the wind? I had the buildings. I figured if I could hug the buildings, I get close to the buildings. That was going to stop the wind. So I figured the buildings, being close to the buildings is a good resource. So then I have to develop an action plan. 
So my possible action steps were, obviously, put on the gloves, as opposed to taking off the gloves, and buttoning up the collar, and finally, choose a route where I'm going to be closest to the building. So I said, all right, Samson Street, because I'm walking up to the fourth. Samson Street is the street where it's the closest, as opposed to like Market Street, which is really wide, and I'm not going to get much, much protection from the building. So I went over to Samson Street, and I walked all the way up Samson Street, and I stayed close to the building the whole time. By the time I got up here, because I walked quickly, I was doing really well, and I felt much better. So that is what a force field analysis for problem solving looks like. You figure out what the situation is now, and that was being too cold. That was my problem. What did I want? Warm up. And what were the obstacles? Not good clothing, too much extreme wind, very cold temperatures. Top priority obstacle, wind. That was my big enemy. Resources I needed, which I had. So when it says, what are your resources that you well, What I needed was a much heavier coat. But when we say about the resources that you need, it's the ones that you can gather and pull together. Like those 10 pieces of paper when you only used seven, we had 10. So you have to, you have to actually evaluate what kind of resources do you have here? Well, I had gloves, I had collar, and I had the buildings. And I was able to get myself together by using these steps. This is a really great tool for anything. This isn't just great for keeping yourself warm or a situation when you're on the bus and you have to think quickly. And you can go through these pretty quickly. I'm thinking it takes maybe about three to five minutes to put something like this together in your head. Maybe even a little shorter, depending on the situation. Maybe one to two, if you can say, what's my problem? What do I want to get to? What are my obstacles? What's the worst obstacle, biggest obstacle? What do I have here? What can I, I do to help myself? What are the different resources I have? Well, if you're in a situation on the bus and you've got something going on, you've got a couple of different resources. You've got the call box, right? If you have a situation where some, you look like you're in extreme danger, you can always call the police. That's another resource. So you can try to talk somebody down on your own, or you can use some of these other resources. Remember that you generally have more resources than you think you do. And a lot of it has to do with just how well you're able to calm yourself down and really step back a little. And the well, reason why I put this in here was because I was talking to Zach last night on the phone, and I said, you know, this group is really interesting. This is a very thoughtful group. There are some groups who are very, very interactive, and they, they get wild in here. This is not that group. I mean, you, you are appropriately interactive, but you, you don't go crazy. And I think it has to do with the fact that you are didactic people. You're, you're thinkers. And so I thought this might be useful for you. So what I'd like for you to do now is to come up with, in these few minutes, a situation where you may have a problem that's ongoing or you had a problem recently. And it can be anything. It can literally be maybe you've got an ongoing problem with a kid. You have a teenage daughter or son who's giving you problems. Think about what the obstacles are to the relationship that you're having with that person. Or it could be a problem where you have a car that's giving you a lot of trouble and you're thinking about whether you want to get rid of it or not. You have to think about, okay, what's the situation? Is the situation that the car is giving you trouble or this, maybe the situation is that you're having uh, transportation issues? So you might want to just talk about it in those terms to yourself. What is the problem? So you have to actually verbalize what the problem is and think about the situation that you want to see happen, how you might want it to change and then go through these steps for yourself and see if it works. So it could be anything from something very complex to something very simple. So that's what I'm going to ask you to do. It just takes a few minutes to do that, and then we're going to carry up. You can talk to somebody else about it for a few minutes, and then we'll end our day. Any questions about that? <coughs>